developer relationship division as a technology evangelist. And uh, today I'm going to talk about how to write HTML5 application and deploy it to multiple platform. It basically, you're going to have one single code base and you're going to deploy it into multiple platforms. So that's what the main topic for today. So to start with, right, how many of you are developing applications or apps uh, out of curiosity or just, just to uh, play around? How many of you develop applications like that? Okay, that's nice. And how many of you start developing application with the pursuit of making some money out of it? Nobody? Okay, good. And those passion, the people who develop application apps with passion, right? That's nice. Nice to see some hands coming up. See, the main thing is you can continue to develop apps for passion, but over a period of time, you will start moving towards making some money out of it, right? You wish to make some money. Right now, you may be learning or you may be exploring different options available with uh, app development, right? So in future, you might start getting into the mode of making money out of apps. Right, it, right now, it's all in a confused state. Like, how do I make money? Do I have to go with an in-app purchase model? Or should I go with an ad model or an app purchase model? How should I go is, is the biggest confusion that kind of uh, prevailing in all the apps, the app developers mind. So if you are here to make money out of app, right? So the option, the research says that you need to target multiple platforms. You need not have to be a research, right? It's, it's quite common sense if you look at it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, assume a basic, very basic uh, approach of app development or a revenue model, which is uh, ad revenue, okay? If you are targeting your app to gain you some uh, revenue out of uh, advertisements, right? Then let's assume you have your app on one platform, which could be Android, right? You have it on one platform. Now, assume you have an app which is very engaging and people for sure is going to open your app at least once in a day. That means you are going to get a page hits or the app views of like maybe, if you have 500 downloads, you are sure to get around 500 app views per day. Now, after two months, maybe you realize that for that 500 app reviews, you may get like $10 at the max, right? That could be the kind of revenue model you are looking at or kind of revenue that you can probably expect out of this uh, 500 downloads. But imagine a situation wherein if you have the same app on more than one platform, right? If the same app is available on Windows Phone, and if it is, uh, is available on uh, iOS and many other platforms like Tizen, which is coming up, right? And all of them has 500 downloads. So if you have five platforms, you will end up having 2,500 page views or app views per day, right? Which is going to add more revenue to your app or you, uh, for yourself, right? And of course, if you have more than one app in the market, it will accumulate and you will get more money out of that. Right? So that is where the industry is moving towards. Right? It's, been, you, it's good to be patriotic about a particular platform for a, for a short period of time, but if you are eventually, if you are planning to make money out of it, you need to scale. You need to move beyond that boundary and go into the other platforms. That's when you get uh, some amount of revenue. Sounds good. But what are the challenges they have? Every platform has a different language. Of course, Java is there in multiple, but if you look at it at the high level, they have different languages. As a developer or as an organization, can I have, uh, can I start learning new technology every like six months or two years? If you see iOS came in after two or two and a half years, Android came in. Objective-C, whoever learned Objective-C, and now if they want to support another platform like Android, they need to come up with, they need to learn 
Java now. Okay, and then after two or three years, Windows Phone came in, and now you can you start learning C sharp. How long can you sustain with this kind of learning curve? If you look at it from the organization perspective, how would an organization maintain the pool of developers who does iOS, who does Java, and who does Windows Phone? And if as soon as and a developer learns both of the, the uh, both of the technologies, it is very difficult to retain that skill in your organization. Obviously, there will be a lucrative offer waiting for him to uh, in some other organization. He will move out. It's a quite challenging. So, what are the basic challenges that we have as a developer and uh, uh, and enterprise? This is the confusing state that you are in. As I said. There's no common language, right? Java, iOS, C sharp, and of course web is already there, JavaScript and other things. Can I make, and uh, is the, are, are the APIs common? All of them support uh, camera, all of them uh, supports uh, GPS. Why can't I reuse it? Can I do it? You have to rewrite the code in order to make use of that same feature in multiple platforms, okay? And the final one is no interoperability. I develop a Java code, can I go ahead and directly run it on uh, iOS? Impossible, right? There are other ways of creating native code based on some standardized code. There are other tools available right now, but that's a good sign. We are moving away from that, the, the black box or bottled uh, approach to a more liberated approach now. But that's good thing, good sign that is we are coming up with. In the market, there are a lot of uh, tools that are currently available. But one good thing about all these platforms is that if you see the highlighted one, HTML5 and JavaScript is common. It's going to run on all of these different platforms without any issues, right? So that's a good thing. I mean, you have one code which is written in HTML5, and if you can run that in multiple platforms, that's a good sign for an enterprise and also for a developer. Now, how does it this one going to run? Like how HTML5 runs on uh, all the platforms without any issues? That basically there are two kinds of apps available. One is web app, which is like a web browser in your, in your smartphone which renders HTML5, okay, and it just does whatever the web can do within a mobile. Other is a hybrid approach. It's quite common. I mean, you might be knowing it already, right? You have a web view, and that web view is hosted in, an, in a native container, and your HTML code is going to run within that container, which will have access to the native capabilities, like Cordova, for, for example, right? So Cordova API, has, uh, there are APIs provided for camera, for GPS, or all those things. How, how, how are they doing it? It's not a magic that happens at JavaScript level. The JavaScript in turn calls the native API, and the native APIs, in a sense like your container APIs, your container will have access to the native capabilities. So it again comes back all the way to your presentation layer, which is HTML5 or JavaScript in this case. So what I'm trying to show here is like, in desktop, the application doesn't have anything to access at the, at the device level. That was the old scenario, right? The next one coming up is a mobile browser. The mobile browser here, if you see, even mobile browser doesn't have access to all the native capabilities, correct? Right? Then if you have a hybrid application, due to that container that is running in, this guy now have access to the native capabilities. So that can give you a richer user experience than browser or anything else, uh, any other uh, things. The other important aspect here is a hybrid app can be put on store. And people can download and retain it on their uh, devices for a longer period of time or whatever, depending on your application uh, logic or the how, how engaging is your application, depending on that. They, they will retain it on their device. At the same time, if it is a browser, people need to remember or they need to bookmark and go to that 
uh, web page whenever they want to, and it's it's a quite uh, not so friendly approach for the end users. Now, how many of you have heard or participated in this battle? Right? Just Google it. The page runs for 10 or 12 different, uh, I mean, search result goes to 10 or different, 10, uh, 1 to 10 or even more, right, number of uh, search result pages. Who do you think is at the top? Who is on top here? How many says native? Okay, good. And how many says is HTML5? Very nice. So we have kind of mix here. Okay, I'll ask you another question. How many says it depends? Excellent. Are they poly? Whoever said depends? And for people who, who didn't raise their hand when I asked that question, do you guys think these people are politically correct? Excellent. There are some people uh, even raising their hands. And how many people think they are logically correct? Exactly. They are not politically correct. They are logically correct. Assume there is a doctor. You go to him, you say, I have a bad headache. Can you give me something? Take this sari done. He'll go home. He is fine. He is cured. Then next day you get stomachache. You go to the same doctor, I'm having this bad stomach ache today. Take this saridan, go home. Eat, this, eat saridan, nothing happens. Again, maybe cold, same saridan. For every disease, there are different treatments that you need to give. Correct? The same thing holds good in technology also. If it is in this battle, you become a third party of your application. You focus on what, what features you need to have in your app, right? And become a third party or third party consultant or something and look at your app and see, is there anything I'm doing very native? In the sense, do I need very frequent, ac frequent access to the hardware capabilities? Like uh, I need to have a continuous streaming from the camera or I need to have a continuous GPS access to, uh, from the uh, native uh, capability. If you have those kind of capability uh, requirements, then definitely in this game, native is sitting on top of the hybrid. But the, if it is other way around, once in a while I'll take picture, once in a while I'll need location database, or most of the time my data comes from some network location maybe a, a, a Twitter kind of application, a social media based application, or simple photo gallery. You don't need to be native in those cases. You can be totally at HTML5 level. What's the advantage you get out of it? Now the same code, I'll show you how you can do it with XDK. The same code you can reuse and reach bigger markets with less energy, less resources, and less cost involved in it, right? And compared to Android and iOS developers, do you think HTML5 and JavaScript uh, developers are expensive? They are, web has been there quite, from quite a long time. And people say HTML, they, they claim it is HTML5, but they will be using all HTML, old HTML only. Since HTML is kind of adjust, chalo adjust karte, right? Because of that nature, it still adjusts to your uh, old uh, HTML and you still be able to run your application without any problem. So that means if I take a web application, put it into a container and run it within a web view, it's going to run fine. Of course, unless you have done majorly different pretty much everything runs. And that's what most of the enterprise is trying to do today. They have a web interface, try to put it into, into a container and sell it as a HTML uh, or, or an app for your different platforms. So with that background, 
Now I want to get into what is this uh, XDK. X stands for cross-platform application development. And this is a free tool available from software.intel.com slash HTML5. The reason is, the reason it is free is because we want to, we, uh, in the sense, Intel want to support HTML5 community in some other way. We contribute to open source a lot. We chair W3C, and there are so many things that we do at HTML5. So this is one of such effort. We are giving this tool completely free. You can download and play around, and you can even uh, package it into multiple platforms. The primary thing here is there are so many disconnected tools in the market. There's some tools do very well on editing, a good code editor, or uh, and then finally you depend on some browser to view it in different form factors. And finally, you deploy it uh, based on some third party by paying some amount of money and building a package for respective platforms. But this tool kind of combi combines all the good things in the world and built with a very, uh, very neat end-to-end -end user interface. So we'll see develop. We'll see these verticals one by one. First, we'll go. We'll start with develop and debug and test, and finally, we'll go to deploy. Okay. So, what is it? Uh, it? It does has a very nice HTML5 editor, based on brackets editor, right? It gives you code completion, code highlight, highlighting, and all those things. That's a very basic thing that anybody would need in an editor. Apart from that, it gives a very nice, what you see, what you uh, get kind of UI designer. You can just drag and drop and create your UI with very short uh, amount of time, right? And how do you, now the biggest challenge based on, uh, because of the, the, uh, the volcanic eruption of form factors, right? You have varying sizes of form factors today. You have 7-inch tablet or 11-inch tablet, 5-inch, 4-inch, you name it, you have a device for that. How do you make your application automatically adjust its presentation layer to those particular different screen sizes? Anybody? Viewport. Viewport is one option. In HTML5 and CSS, Yes, somebody said media queries, exactly. So that's, that's what is called responsive web design, right? Based on the form factors, it automatically adjusts its UI to have a best, to give a best experience to the end user. So here, media queries are defined, and if, uh, people who have written media queries, uh, uh, CSS would know that you need to write a lot of code to get that working, uh, get that to work perfectly fine on uh, various form factors, correct? Now that has been made it very simple by, you can visually go ahead and design your media queries here. I'll show you the demo of that as well. Then we have our own framework. You are free to use that, or if you don't want, you can go ahead and use any of the third party frameworks, JavaScript framework primarily, right? App framework is actually well optimized to render well on those web views. Okay, and also it is optimized to run best on these different form factors, like um, different platforms like iOS, Windows, Runtime, and other things. Any game developers here? No, I think it may be a FYI for you guys, right? So here, in game, generally the problem what people are facing is that in HTML5, you don't have uh, multi-channel sound support in HTML5. So you hit somebody in your game, you expect the sound to come at the time when the impact happens, but actually the sound comes sometime else because of the uh, asynchronous uh, uh, sound and other things. But here, we have this app, app game interface. What it does is like your canvas and all those things. We have a uh, technology called polysound, uh, polysonic uh, sound uh, effect, which will Eliminate, eliminate that kind of bottleneck, and it, you can play any number of uh, parallel sounds, and it runs at exact the time, time when you actually trigger it. Secondly, canvas is also kind of slow, right? If you try to draw something on canvas, it's not quite uh, friendly. So what we are doing is all your canvas requests are automatically routed 
to something called OpenGL. How many of you have heard of OpenGL? So OpenGL, as we all know, it's a very good for presentation, right? The drawings and all will be good. So it automatically redirects your calls to OpenGL. As a result, the game performance will be very good. So we'll see this first. Okay, so this is the tool uh, which you, when you download, uh, you need to create an account with our cloud services for you to later test and uh, deploy your application. Now, as I said, you have a code editor. Of course, when you go here, you can start a new project and other things, which wherein you will be pointing to some location and where all your HTML5 and JavaScript files are going to be dumped, basically, right? Now, I already have created a shell project. There is nothing in it at the moment. It's just a blank project, kind of. Now, if you see here, there's a code and a design section. Now, the moment I go to design section, or oh, let me show you one project, by the way. Okay, go ahead and create. Now, the moment I go to design section, it is asking me which framework you want to use, which JavaScript framework you want to use. App framework is one that I talked about. Apart from that, you can use boot, uh, Twitter Bootstrap or jQuery Mobile and Top, can, top Code. So these are the things that we have tested and we are sure it is going to work perfectly fine. But if you want to use, for example, AngularJS or some knockout.js or anything like that, you are free to go ahead and use it. The only caveat here is that you will not be able to use the designer for that matter. All you have to do is you can do everything on the coding side of it. You can ha write your own JavaScript and everything, but you will not be able to design anything visually like how I'm going to do now. Okay, let me go ahead and select it. shows like how it looks like. So app, app framework, I'm intentionally not selecting it. I'll come back and show you how it looks like when it goes to app framework. So I'll use the Twitter uh, bootstrap for now. Uh, I'll keep on doing it. It's, it's like self-explanatory. Uh, uh, I will keep on talking about what I'm doing also. So now I'll have to add a header. Let me just Let me add header, okay. Now here, here, that's my demo title. Now I want to set some background to this. So what it is doing is, at the background it is creating corresponding CSS classes, CSS files, HTML, everything it is generating. And it creates a pretty neat HTML file. I mean, you don't create anything like inline style sheets and all those things, it never does that. It, it creates a very neat uh, UI for you. And I'll go ahead and select this. So that's the color that you have. Now, I'll go ahead and put a row here. Okay. And then uh, a column. I can adjust the column if I want. Go here, I'll remove this fixed. So now, let me create simple login screen here. One, two. So this one is login, correct? So I want the text to come at the top. Username. Now here I'll go. I'll say password. Again, top left. Top left. Come here and set it as password. So you are actually what is happening on the right side? These are all various styles that you have. And if I go back and have a look at it, so it created a style sheet for you. And also it created the code for you. And you can see it's all based on latest standards. Now I'll go back to the design. Now I, I need to put some buttons here. Let me go ahead and put that. It will be like login. I want to show it as success message. And let me have an icon next to it. And then cancel. I'm going to have, um, call it as danger and cancel. OK, that's your basic um, UI is created. Now I'll show you some of the. Uh, the special features here. Let me go ahead and put a list box here. I'll tell you why I'm putting it. It, it doesn't have any relevance with the login, 
but I want to show a particular feature here. I said we support media query definition right from the UI here. Now at the time of designing, I might want to do, I want to see how it looks like when it goes to different form factors. I can do it right from here or I can just drag and see how it is coming in. Now if you see if I go too close, the content is kind of crampy, right? It's just going very small. It doesn't have a very good user experience. So what I can do, there is something called wrap points, which is nothing but your media query max width attributes. I'll go ahead and say phone. You see here, it says 320 pixel. And then I have, let's say, phablet. Phone and a tablet, right? So that's what we call phablet. Now we'll see what happens. As soon as I cross the first one, it automatically wraps. Of course, your UX designer may not like it. He, may, he would say, I want this login button to come at the top when it goes. May not be, may not be too um, um, relevant, but I'll just show you how it goes. Now I'll change the wrap from, where, from where you want to wrap the content. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do here. And I do it, now login went up. So you will be able to define these various uh, form factor changes with, with everything on the uh, UI itself. Okay, so now uh, one more feature I want to show here is that, uh, now I selected the list view, list box here. Now what I can do, there is a media query section here. I'll go ahead and say, if the width is less than 331 pixel, I want to hide, sorry, I'll go ahead and do that again. Um, show hide, okay. This is the new style that I'm adding. And if the pixel is less than this much, then don't show anything. Again, CSS is created at the back end. Now, as soon as I move, go below 330, you see that getting disappeared, okay. And now, once I design it, all I have to do is like, go here and emulate. We have rich set of emulators here. If you see here, I can go ahead and emulate on all these different form factors. If you see here, if I go to K900, it says what is a Cordova API, and we, we do support Cordova APIs, like 2.9 uh, is what we are supporting. It, say, it says what is the screen resolution of like, uh, K900, what is a, a pixel per inch, and everything is defined over here, okay? Now I can go ahead and do, uh, see how it looks on iPad or how it looks on other devices, okay? Now, uh, not only that, if I want to do a testing on accelerometer, you have a game and you want to test based on accelerometer, you'll be able to see, you can see x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. It shows what values are throwing in and it gives you, it triggers those events for you automatically. Then of course, I want to test push notifications, there is an option like this, you can say hi, send, it shows how the push notifications are going to come. So it's basically simulating everything that happens on our local, uh, on an actual device. The geolocation, I'll change the UI to say leaflet, this is another app that we have developed, we have developed using leaflet.js, which is open source JavaScript library for maps. Now see, this section here is a geolocation. Now, if you want to develop an app, app which has a geolocation capability, maybe if I go to a particular location, I want to see what are the offers that are there in that location. So what happens, whenever you move there, the watch position event gets triggered, right, in a regular GPS scenario. So that is what is happening here. Also, we will trigger watch position based on this. See, if I move it around, based on this pointer location, it updates the map on the left side. Again, it depends on what speed I have in the internet. So it keeps pointing it like this. So based on watch position, I'm updating the map, actually. So you can do all these testing right in the XDK emulation it, emulator itself. Okay, so this is something that they have. So you can connect it that way. Then finally, once you do all these uh, testing, so I'm going to uh, go into a completed uh, solution here, which we have built uh, some time back. Now, if I go and see how this application looks like, right, 
So this is one of the application that we have built, wherein similarly I have built an uh, um, image gallery kind of. Now let's see how it looks on Nexus. Okay. Now how about Droid? So that those images are gone because there is not not sufficient space to show those images. Now when I change it to change the orientation, it automatically starts showing those uh, because I have bigger space to show those content. So all these emulation you can do without any uh, issues on this particular screen itself or in, on this application itself. Now once you are done with all this testing, now the time to do the testing on actual device, right? So far you have been with the emulation. So in the actual device also, you don't have to push or you don't have to create an APK and install it on a device and see how it works and things like that. We have a cloud service. Okay. So you have a, uh, we have a cloud service with which you will be able to, let me just switch to the app here. Okay. Hope you can see. And this is, so this is the app called App Preview, Intel App Preview, which is available in all the stores. This is actually available in all the stores. Like if you go to iPhone or wherever, right, you get to see this app. This is like a testing app for you, right? What it does is whatever you have here, I was showing you here before that if I go here, right, I can do, uh, I can do barcode scanning. Okay. So once I do this barcode scanning here, now I can go ahead and it, it picks that URL and it can launch over the browser. In that sense, it's not launching on the browser, it's actually launching with that container. Okay. As a result, what happens is whatever the final outcome is going to be, it's going to run in the same mode, uh, mode here. Right. And this is the UI. This is how it is going to look like. Right. Now let's see whether I can do. Okay. See the orientation change. Um, I'll try my best to show it, right? So orientation is also changing. And it shows all these things. And in addition to this, okay, good. So in addition to this, what I can do is, let me switch over again. So if I put this piece of code here, what you can see down there in my JavaScript or in my HTML, I can do remote debugging also, in a sense. Whenever I, I encountered some, uh, some errors or some messages that comes in a debug window, right? All of them can be now transferred to my XDK uh, instance here. So what happens is like if you, uh, like uh, uh, you have used, you might have used the Chrome um, developer tools, right? Wherein you debug and you will be able to find out. Exactly the same UI you will get it, but this time it will be getting that information from the actual device. And you will be able to debug, makes minor changes in terms of text, font, and things like that, and you will be able to get it. Maybe because of the internet connection speed, I'm on 3G right now. So maybe it is not loading, but you can try it out yourself, or you can come to my uh, Intel booth, and you will be able to see it. So finally, if I, uh, from the build perspective, you need to provide all the build information, like uh, if, it's, if it's Android, you need to provide all the Android uh, specific information like uh, your uh, login ID or uh, whatever the required information to create a package, right? You need to provide all those information. I can quickly skim through that here. I'm running out of time, so I'm just rushing in. Sorry about that. Okay. So you need to give all the app details, the version and how it is going to look like. And finally, you also need to specify which kind of build you want. If you want a heavy build, like you have a Cordova API, then the package size could be like 3 MB, 4 MB. If it is a lean build and you just have an internet connection and you need to access some data from internet, then it's a lean build. So the maybe some file size could be like 1 MB or something like that. You can decide those, provide all your images, then finally provide all the credentials, then click on that build app now. It's going to give you the APK in terms of Android. It's going to do, give you APPX in terms of Windows Store. Like that, it gives you the package. All you have to do is take it, 
and publish onto your stores. That's the only thing that, that will be pending for you to do. The other thing is like I have pointed my XDK, whatever I have done so far, right? It is now pointed to uh, my Eclipse because you are all Android guys, right? We are in uh, DroidCon, so I should be showing this. So I have pointed my uh, location as uh, assets folder in my Eclipse. So what I can do is I can have all these HTML automatically updated onto my Eclipse and with my favorite Eclipse editor, right, I'll be able to create packages or I'll be able to emulate on my own emulator and do whatever I want. So that's the connection that you can build. You can do all your testing till emulation from the XDK. Once the UI, everything looks perfectly fine. Ignore the build part. Use your own build tool and build the way whatever you want. Okay? So that's what I had for today. And if you have any questions, uh, first of all, go ahead and download, try out. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, uh, contact me or you can even send uh, a, a note in the Intel uh, develop, uh, developer forum. People are active there and people are actively responding to your queries. Okay? Yeah, that's all I had. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, UI, uh, we have matched to the maximum level, right, actual device, and that's why we show, like, uh, pixel per inch and all those things, right? We went to that extent, and we are showing it in an actual device. We have been uh, doing it. The one thing I forgot to mention about App Framework is that uh, app, if you use App Framework, right, it adapts to the target platform. Now, if I am running on um, Android, then it automatically changes to a black kind of theme. Whereas if I am on iOS, it changes automatically to the iOS thing. So th those kind of changes are automatically done. So to your question, uh, I think uh, almost 90 plus percent, I would say, it matches the accurate, uh, accurate uh, uh, I mean, uh, to the target platform. Yes, yes. Yes. In case of, uh, so in the build, in the build section, right, we are supporting build to Chrome OS. Sorry, uh, if you see here, right, there are web apps, Chrome, and Facebook. So web app is like ultimately all your code is going to be given to you in a zip format. You go to your web servers, deploy it, you are done. Okay. In case of other like Chrome and other things, we will have incremental code, what is required to connect and things like that, you are ready to go. It's the same code basically. Any other questions? So I'll be around, I'll be around the booth. If you have any more questions, please feel free to come over and we'll have a discussion on that. Okay, thank you.